Brucham Abayim, again, thank you very much for attending and welcome to our home. Uh, again, we're in the middle of the um, series on the Amida, on the standing prayer. And uh, again, one of the most important prayers that we say. In fact, when we say the word tefillah, uh, that really alludes to the Shemona Esrei, the 18 prayers. Again, which is 19, but that's a discussion for itself. So let's begin. So again, this week we're on the, um, on my, this week on my thoughts, we will continue our in-depth discussion of the Amida with the sixth blessing and this prayer. This is also the third of the 13 personal requests that we offer to God Almighty daily. Now, in this prayer, we request of God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, to salach lanu, which means to forgive us. This request follows a logical sequence. After all, before a person can turn to God and ask for forgiveness, they must first use their intellect to ascertain a proper path to repent. This is the sixth blessing in the Amida. The sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet is a vav. A vav is shaped like a hook. This may be an allusion to the close relationship that exists between the first three requests of the Amida. Now, in the first request, we ask for intellect. Then we ask for assistance in using our intellect in our quest, again, to achieve repentance. And now in this prayer, we request that our repentance should be accepted and that God, our Father in Heaven, should forgive all of our sins. We begin the prayer with the words, Salak Lundu Avinu, Father, forgive us. The tour in Orachayim notes that this request and in the preceding one, God is called our Father. It was God Almighty Himself who blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. Well, this can be compared to a parent who gives their child, again, life. So too, God Almighty gave life to His child, Adam, first man. As it states in Psalm 103.13, as, a merci as merciful as a father is to his children, so too has God Almighty shown mercy to those who are in awe of him. The love that God has for us is nothing to do with merit. It is a natural love that a father feels towards his child. As it states in Psalm 145, 9, that God is good to everyone and his mercies extend to all of his creations. We are all his children, as it states, created but seldom elokim in the image of God. The word salach denotes unconditional forgiveness. We refer to God Almighty in this prayer as our Father. It is the responsibility of a father, according to Torah law, to not only love their child, but also to discipline them when necessary. The last thing that a father, pardon me, God as a father, wants to do is to administer harsh punishment. But he accepts the fact that there are times that he has a responsibility to dispense tough love, to help us to overcome our errant ways, and to help us to return to the proper path. Punishment? Punishment is a last resort. Imagine if you were walking down the street and you see a drunk who's lying in the gutter in his own vomit. What would you do? Well, probably shake your head and think what a waste of humanity but then you would just walk on by. But what if the person lying in the gutter was the son of a friend of yours? Well, then you might stop and ask him if there was anything you could do for him. But again, you would continue on your way. But what if the person lying in the gutter was your own son? Well, then you would pick him up by the collar and drag him home, scolding him for his behavior and lack of self-respect. The more that you love, the more that you get involved. You know, many times what we perceive as God punishing us is in reality an expression of deep and sincere love that God Almighty harbors for us. It is not a punishment. It is tough love. It becomes the catalyst that motivates and helps us to turn to Him for assistance. You know, this prayer begins with the word Shalach lanu avinu ki chatanu. Forgive us our Father for we have sinned. The Hebrew word for forgiveness is shalach, pardon me, selach. We recite this prayer three times daily. In addition, the word selach is repeated three times in this request. 
any time that we repeat anything three times, it, is, it creates what we call a chazaka, a present precedent. A father forgives his child's sins, and even more important, he forgets their disobedience completely. The slate is wiped clean. In fact, some of the ways that the relationship between them becomes even, in fact, in some ways, pardon me, that relation between father and child becomes even stronger. As our sages tell us, in the place where a tshuva stands, a righteous person cannot. Like any loving parent, God Almighty appreciates the fact that their child pushes himself in an attempt to overcome their errant ways. Tough love is a means to an end, not an end in itself. The gematria, the numerical value of the word salach is 98. The number 98 connects to the 98 admonitions listed in the portion of Kisabla. The only way for us to avoid these admonitions is for us to seek forgiveness for our many transgressions. If we do so with intellect and sincere repentance, then we can be certain that God, our Father, will surely forgive us. I find it interesting that the numbers 9 plus 8 equals 17. The gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word, Tov, which means good. In addition, 3 times 98 equals 294. 2 plus 9 plus 4 equals 15. This is the same number of words found in the previous blessing of Hashiva, Hashivenu Avinu, return us our Father, which also uses the word Avinu, our Father. It is God Almighty's wish and desire that we share a father child relationship. 98 is also the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word segula, which means a treasure. The fact that we have the ability to repent and completely erase our sins is a true gift, a treasure, from our benevolent Father in Heaven. However, we can never forget that in addition to being our Father, He is also our King. So we make our request for forgiveness to God Almighty not only in His capacity as our Father, but also in his capacity as our king. We do so when we utter the words, Machal lanu malkenu ki fashanu. Pardon us, our king, for we have willfully sinned. Since we have sinned so grievously, we can't, can't expect the complete forgiveness of a benevolent father. So we ask him that he should at least pardon us in his capacity as our king. Forgiveness is an absolute. However, a pardon can be revoked. We can never take God's benevolence nor our many transgressions for granted. As King David stated in Psalm 51, 51, For I recognize my willful sins, and and my errors are before me always. So David Amalek is saying that he is well aware of his willful, willful sins, since they are obvious. But even those unintentional sins, transgressions that had become habitual, it is those same sins that he especially does not allow himself to forget. Since it is human nature that if a person feels no remorse over their transgressions, they may condition themselves to become insensitive to sinning. This then creates the ability to defy the will of their Creator. The Torah Norachayim notes that in this blessing and in the previous one, God is called our Father. A Father's compassion has no limitations. As King David stated in Psalm 105, 13, As a father is merciful to his children, so has God shown mercy to those who fear him. For he knows our impulsive nature and he remembers that we are but dust. His mercy even extends further as it states in Psalm 145, 9, that God is good to all and that his mercies extend to all of his creations. The Redoc stated that no mercy is as intense as that of a father towards his child. It is customary to beat one's chest on the left side over their heart with their right hand while reciting this prayer. This is repeated twice, again, when we recite it. Once when reciting the word chatanu, we have erred, 
And then a second time, when we recite the word Foshanu, we have willfully sinned. By striking our chest, we acknowledge our guilt and profess a true desire to serve God Almighty properly. We beat, we beat our heart, since it is our heart that is the seat of our passion. Passion is the motivating force that brings us to sin. By beating our chests, we initiate a positive action, and that action leads us on our road to true repentance. As our sages tell us, that on the path that a person desires to travel, heaven will assist him. The prayer continues with the words, Ki mochel v'soleach ato, for you pardon and forgive. The word mochel, pardon, when spelled with a, without a vav, has a gematria, a numerical value of 78. The number 78 is three times God's ineffable name of mercy. This tells us that even as our king, he still wishes to extend mercy towards us since he is a benevolent ruler. However, we must first demonstrate some form of contrition. Otherwise, he may be reluctant to continue pardoning us. Then his patience may well cease and we will be forced to accept his strict judgment. As mentioned before, the word salah, forgive, appears in this prayer three times. This tells us that no matter how many times we sin, in the end, whenever we turn to our benevolent Father and ask Him for forgiveness, He will always be willing to not only forgive, but in addition, He will forget all of our transgressions. The love that a father entertains even for his wayward child. The prayer ends with the words, Baruch Atah Hashem, Hanun Hamar Blessed are you, Hashem, the gracious one who forgives abundantly. More than we want to be forgiven, God, our benevolent Father in heaven, wants to forgive us. It has nothing to do with merit. You know, the word, the Hebrew word Hanun, is derived from the word Chinam, which translates to mean free, a gift, with no strings attached. His concern is only for us and our benefit. The Holy Baal Shem Tev told his students that God Almighty loves you even more than a woman who has been barren for years. But then when she is already older, she gives birth to a beautiful child. One can only imagine how much love she gives to her special child. He told them that God Almighty loves you even more than this woman loves her precious treasure. The Rambam in Hilchus Tshuva stated how great is repentance, for it draws a person close to the divine presence. Even those who were alienated yesterday, the sinner was hateful in the eyes of God, repulsive, abhorrent, and abomination. And behold, today he repents and he is now beloved, cherished, intimate, and endeared. Yesterday the sinner was separated from God, but then he cried out to God his Father in heaven, and he is answered immediately. He performs mitzvot, and God accepts them graciously and with joy. It is God's true wish that penitents constantly draw closer and closer to him. You know, it's interesting that the nations of the world served idols that they perceived as angry gods. We read in the book of Exodus 18.12 that when Yisro, Moshe's father-in-law, converted to Judaism, he brought sacrifices to God, Elohim. This name alludes to God's name of severity. He did so since he thought that God Almighty was like all idols, angry. We, on the other hand, perceive God Almighty as our benevolent Father in heaven, who constantly views us with love and mercy. Sin is a malady of the soul that is manifested many times on our bodies. If the healing is not achieved in this lifetime, well, then one will have to pay their debt in the world to come. That being the case, happy is the man whose suffering is felt in this world, since it heals the soul of the sinner and gives him life in eternity. Forgiveness by God Almighty is not only for the healing of the soul, it also heals a person from their physical afflictions. We must realize that afflictions are administered on our bodies in order to assist us in healing our souls. Once we repent, those afflictions are no longer needed. 
Once again, I hope that you have found this, my thought, interesting and informative. Next week, we'll continue with the seventh blessing of the Amida. Redeem us from our affliction. The next three, next three blessings in this section refer to the physical, emotional, and material needs of the individual. Again, let us pray that God Almighty brings a quick and decisive end to the war in Gaza with a complete victory over Hamas and all the evil that exists in the world. May he bring home safely all the hostages, cure all the sick and injured, comfort all the mourners, and bring home all the brave IDF soldiers led by Mashiach Sukainu quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, let me thank you for attending, for listening. Again, Bukacha bless you and yours with only good, safety, health, and happiness. If you will, again, if you haven't done so yet, please push the uh, like button and subscribe. And if all possible, please share with your friends. And bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom. Again, there will be no musical rendition after this, and hopefully it will continue some other time. God bless and be well. Thank you.